Hello Socks, today we are reviewing episode 7 of this trash TV show. I drank a lot of liquor last night! I can't believe that Ed, like that's I genuinely how he walks. Like I know we make fun of him. He hobbles. But it looks very uncomfortable. It does. You know what he looks like? You remember those things? They're like these little um, Dutch toys them. or yeah. Russian yeah, yeah, toys yeah, yeah. where like you put them inside of each other. Russian China dolls. He looks like a Russian, Russian China, China doll. doll. I just can't stop looking at your boobs. Oh yes, I need to look at my boobs. <laughs> In the morning they wake up and rip a core session. Right. We like it. We do like it. Kalani thought it would be a good thing since her relationship with Laswella was already over to bring their children on vacation since TLC's right, paying for everything. Out. Therapy with Dr. Jason last night was really difficult. I basically broke down over the fact that Oswello's cheated on me throughout our relationship and I don't really know where to go from here. Here's the thing with Kalani. She's saying, I don't know where to go from here. You could have broke up with this man years ago. He doesn't pull his weight as a father. He doesn't pull his weight as a husband. He'd rather after work go and play video games. You've said that many times instead of spending time with you or the kids. There's many times that she could have just held her head up high and walked away from this relationship and sent his ass back to Samoa. Red, red, red. As much as I want everything to be back to normal, I don't know if it ever will be. I just don't know if I could ever forgive him. You want me to make you some popcorn for the circus? <laughs> you want me to go and make some popcorn real quick? <laughs> we need to skip past these mother- We're gonna skip Oswello and Kalani because they, they shouldn't even be there. The relationship's be, yeah. over. She wants to go sleep with Dallas. Past life, life regression. regression therapy, so. Should I go first and tell you what happened? And then you can tell me what happened. I will. Because I'm gonna freak you out. Okay. It's not that complicated! Listen, if you want to drink a pumpkin spice latte and believe all this bullshit that people came up with during COVID because they were bored, that's fine. Dude. I'm a platypus rising. I know these things. This is nuts, man. This I, is... I don't... <laughs> it's... This can't be true. Right. And then he's like, I'm enlightened. Like, I feel enlightened for my past life. Like, I had a green... Some type of green costume on. I had no eyes, but yet I could see myself. He's a blind leprechaun, is what he's saying and they were throwing things at him, at a circus. He's like playing into the fact that he's already an incel. Uh -huh. If I ever see him like downtown in San Diego or something, I don't know what I'm gonna do. If you stick him, I'll give you a thousand bucks. <laughs> it was a sad life, but I gotta really love myself and not feel I have to perform. I just need to be who I am. You can't be 60 and go on the internet and say you have to love yourself, bro. You're a fucking grown adult. Okay, this is a pet peeve of mine. When guys say, I need to love myself, yeah, or this so is my truth. There's yeah, no yeah, such, bro, yeah. there's the truth and there's a fucking lie. It's totally. funny that that's the lesson he took away from lesson. this experience because he's been loving himself this entire time. He's had blind love for himself and he's loved himself more than other people because he has a lack of empathy and he's a narcissist. So in what way does this help him become a better person? It doesn't. But now he's going to all of a sudden pretend like he's changed and he's realized so many things about himself. We all know it's BS. We have a way with words. I only went to one lifetime, but I knew that I've been reincarnated 20, 28 times. And you've been in my life seven. Really? You were there. Oh, yeah, sure just, just, just oh. you're so much better when you don't speak. About things you have no idea. If you were reincarnated 28 times, you don't think your life would be at a better place? They play a flashback and Christian is doing a somersault right now because it's ridiculous. The therapist asks, what did you see him and what did you ask from him? And Liz starts crying, I've seen him. And Christian, what are you doing? You go to the bathroom? We're gonna have a break right now, Socks. Why don't you go to your cabinet, bring out some gushers, you know, get yourself some snacks. Christian will be right back. In my past life, I bought all the Pokemon cards. <laughs> and now in this life, I am a millionaire. During the past life regression, Liz says that she has to learn to stick up for herself, <clears throat> something that the entire fan base has been telling her for years. So I'm happy that she finally, you know, came to terms with the reality of the situation after this past life regression. I need to start using my voice more. I do feel like I need to bring that to the relationship. I just feel like we need to work on how I can do that. I still have a load of things to work on, I know that. I can't believe people have sex with this guy. Everything he does is so, look how he sits. Look how he's grabbing the towel. Yeah. Look at his facial expressions. He holds his arm like this. Right. It's fucking crazy. Liz was also just saying that she has to use her voice more and then he immediately started with an I statement. 
So disregard of what she said. It's about him. Yeah. It's always about him. Everything in the relationship's well, about him. So... I, right, as soon as she's done talking, well, I can't wait to talk about myself, so now I'm gonna talk about myself. There's no question that I wanna be with you, that you're the one for me. As long as you're gonna be a doormat and you're gonna put up with him cheating on you, whether it's virtual, whether it's in person, he's gonna keep doing it because he's gonna keep getting away with it. Ed was talking about doing hypnosis with Liz. There's all these things they're looking for that are almost like supernatural and a lot of it's bullshit. Here's what you need to do. Not cheat on her yeah. and just be a respectful man. It's really not that hard. And it's tough to have the conversation, but it's tough for a reason because it, it, it's gonna actually fucking create results, you know? Right. And this other shit is made up. Back on the game, just be me. Schizo Kelly, don't talk to yourself in the mirror like that. Kelly, what are you still doing at the resort? Last episode, you said you were done in this relationship. Be done. Leave. Hold your head up high and walk yeah. away. This woman doesn't love you. She doesn't treat you with respect. She's trying to ruin your life because of these allegations with her and her daughter. There's no evidence. Get out of there, bro. I haven't talked to Kelly this morning. Um, it's, it's just not easy. And I think it's best that we're both just spending some time alone in our own thoughts. You have no thoughts. You don't know how to pour champagne or do anything. <laughs> I was a little child and I knew these things. You Figured sell out. Halloween costumes for a living. <laughs> <laughs> your lingerie is terrible. It's trash. If you had thoughts, you would think about how bad your lingerie is. Yes, and your life, and your taste in men. Go fuck your prisoner. <laughs> Molly's actions, her body language, everything was completely different. I don't know if I was just an opportunity. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what we've been saying this entire time, Kelly. So I'm happy that you came to terms with that. You're eating a fucking Danish. I know that you are tired of being a cop in New York City and you wanted to retire. You're retiring at a very young age. Barry Manilow's 80 years old, still performing. And I use him as an example because it's so fucking respectable to keep grinding and keep working and providing at 80 years old till the wheels fall off. He said that at his concert when I went with my parents. He said, I'm gonna keep going till the wheels fall off. And I was like, yeah, that's a fucking man. Right there. Barry Manilow's 20 times the man Kelly ever will be. In his life, ever. You wanna get two I magnets? I wanna get two and... magnets and to go on the opposite ends and force themselves into his, come on, and make his teeth straight. Right. Or I can come and I could go douche and knock one of them into the other. Right. Or, you know, I don't know what we need to do, but it is bothersome. This gap in his teeth, it's quite large. I just dropped our little brother Christian off at the airport and then I got a haircut and now I am talking to you beautiful people. I was thinking while I was getting my haircut and let me know what you think about this in the comments, but do you think that Kelly is hesitant to talk about what he experienced with Molly and Olivia in Georgia because an attorney advised him to not talk about it? Hello? What's going on my people? You need a robe, where's your robe? This is a robe only I told you, robes party. and swimsuits. Man, you lucky I got my swimsuit on. Obviously, Kelly doesn't give one single frick about wearing a robe to the robe party because there's a lot on his mind. We're currently on episode seven. We're still catching up, but the cast members and just about the entire world has seen Molly act like a cold fish emotionally with this man. So everyone's very concerned right now, and you can see that the cast is going out of their way to make sure that Kelly feels comfortable. Kelly, I hope you don't mind. I didn't invite Molly, yes too. No. I don't know where you guys stand after everything that's been going on. Oh, that's real sweetie pie of Joby to say to Kelly. Kelly goes on to inform the Broken Toys that he feels very upset that Molly told him that she wasn't in love with him anymore. Oh, well, she was like, look, I understand that you, you're not in love with me. I don't know where she got that from. And then she's like, I'm not in love with you. What? So... Obviously, Kelly assumed that Molly invited him to go on the show with her in order to repair their relationship when we know the real reason. It was to promote her Halloween costumes. And let's be real, anyone can tell this by going on Molly's Instagram. Remember that date that her and Kelly went on when they were bowling with coconuts? She cut Kelly out of the footage and used it as an advertisement to sell her shitty lingerie. Not to mention, this is Molly's favorite picture that she took on the trip, and it was when they had that try-on haul because she got free promotion for her business on The Last Resort. It is so painfully obvious that this this woman used this man as an opportunity to promote her lingerie that even the other cast members are starting to pick up on. I can't believe that Molly would tell Kelly that she doesn't love him. I feel like, you know, we're all here to work on our relationships 
and she's not even trying. But the good news is, Kelly Brown has been dismissed after an alleged altercation with Molly Hopkins' daughter, AKA, there was zero evidence to back up Olivia's claims that Kelly put his hands on her. The past couple of videos, I have been hyper-focused on Molly and Kelly's relationship because allegations like this can ruin someone's life. And here's the thing for Olivia. She has a lot of trauma because not only is Molly a Dodwater partner, but she's a Dodwater mother, and there were many men in and out of Olivia's life. There was at least 10 men that moved in and out of my house, and it's really unfair of you guys to point fingers. Ugh, if Molly was a restaurant, she would probably be the chum bucket if you're picking up what I'm putting down because the food's terrible, but she still expects you to pay full price for it. You know, if she doesn't want you, man, move on, man. Yeah. Hey, snaps for Ed. I know that we give him a lot of shit and for good reason because he's a total incel, but I really appreciate him showing up for Kelly here and being honest with him about the situation. You're Kelly, are, you, are you cold? Do you want me to ask someone to yeah, bring your rope? Please? Yeah, because Dude, it's kind of windy. Get as much out of this as you can. I mean, we're all here to learn something. I mean, the next thing you know, Kelly sees Oswello and Kalani approaching and he is thrilled because he doesn't want to talk about his daughter relationship with Molly anymore. So Oswello being the bro he is brought Kelly a row because Kelly feels out of place in this tank top and Kelly says to Oswello that this is the most affection he's got on the trip. <laughs> Kelly adds, man, I knew my brother was going to take care of me. This is my brother. And then he gives Oswello a big hug. So the boys are in the pool playing volleyball. The vibes are immaculate until Molly shows up. Oh, look, it's the Battle of the Bulge. <laughs> Kelly looks at her like, damn, man, I can't catch a break. You already got to promote your shitty lingerie. Why are you still here? While I'm in the pool playing volleyball with the guys, Molly arrives, and I'm like, why? Why are you here? Time out, Kelly. If you don't want to see this woman, you can also leave the resort. Molly proceeds to try and play the victim in front of the women, which doesn't surprise me at all. Molly says to the audience, I don't appreciate Kelly trying to paint me as this terrible person. Kelly doesn't try to paint you as a terrible person. If anything, you do that to yourself. Molly goes on to say, you act like you haven't done anything, Kelly, when you know good well what you've done. What has he done, Molly? You won't say what he's done because he's done nothing wrong to you. Cuts into the Dirty Bird. She's having a one-on-one -on -one therapy session with one of the self-proclaimed therapists and talking about how lying is one of her triggers. So when Michael lies to her, she gets very upset and lashes out at him. But I find this very funny because she lies to Michael throughout their entire relationship. It's gonna be the first time that I have a one-on-one -on -one session with Michael since I learned about my triggers. When I get triggered, I sometimes can be too aggressive. To save time, we're just gonna skip this segment because we already know what's gonna happen. She's not gonna get held accountable and the therapist is gonna play softball with her because they're all industry plants. I had a hysterectomy and he he didn't do nothing. She says to the girls that Kelly told her, I didn't come here to be your do boy. I'm gonna look up what that means because I've never heard that before. A do boy is a guy that likes or loves a girl that is not really interested in him, but the girl will keep this guy around to do things for her. Doesn't that describe the situation to a T? She did the same thing with her ex, Lewis, who she went on the show before with. It seems like no matter what relationship this woman enters, she wants her partner to do the fucking most for her, but she's not willing to do the same for her partner. Molly goes on for the rest of the episode to try and paint Kelly in a bad light, talking about how he didn't give her a card when she got her hysterectomy. Bruh, I don't know if you get someone a card when they have a hysterectomy. I didn't even know what that was until I looked it up. And here's the thing. If you were out of commission for a couple days, I'm sure that he did a lot of nice things for you. All he says to the girls, I feel like what you did to get me, that's how you're gonna keep me. Interesting, what you did to get me, that's how you're gonna keep me. That's so funny to hear from Molly because she treated him completely differently when he worked as a police officer in New York City, didn't he? And when this man that treated her with love and respect decided to retire in Georgia and make that sacrifice, all of a sudden he's not powerful. You're not attracted to him because he's not a cop anymore. So you go the complete different opposite way and start a relationship with the prisoner. We all think it's so great and then somebody else might come around and smack it up flip it, rub it down, and in the meantime, <laughs> yeah. it feels pretty good. You have a unique way of telling on yourself, Molly, and you would say that because you're a cheater. It's a temporary high, uh. right? It may not be relationship material, but it certainly lets you know what you've been missing. 
from reading numerous articles on the internet, Socks, it's not that Molly didn't go on the show with the prisoner because he's not relationship material. It's because the prisoner is a married man and she didn't want her reputation to be even worse than it already is. Boys, on the other hand, have been talking about going to the strip club the past couple days. However, they excluded Ed and they've decided to finally include him on the plan. In the past, strip clubs have been a point of contention between me and Yara, but I'm hoping at this time Yara will understand that I just want to show Asuelu a fun time and I want to get him to experience a strip club for the first time ever. You don't care about Asuelu. You've been looking for any reason to go to the strip club and look at another woman's titties. I'm out of cash. Hey, you take bank cards? Sure. I, I know strippers who work in Key West. You do? Yes. I got the hookup. That's one of the main reasons. Like, so I don't want my wife to find out. Don't tell the girl. No, I'm not going to, but are you okay? Are you sure? Jovi slept with one of these strippers that he's trying to meet up with at the club in the past before he got married to Yara. I cannot believe that Jovi even wants to go to a strip club considering his history with Yara. You really know this is a bad idea, Jovi, when Ed is the only person making sense right now. And remember Ed and Jovi, Heckle and Jekyll, they were on a previous season of the show together. Ed got caught messaging Rosemary Vega, his ex, behind Liz's back, and Jovi got on him about, you need to treat women better. Well, how the turns table, Jovi, because now you're the one disrespecting your woman. Yeah, you live long enough to become the villain or whatever. There's no way in God's heaven, then I'm gonna lie to Liz and end up like them. Thank you guys, I'm excited. Oh, I am. Yeah. And I'm, we, we gotta have each other's back. Yeah, you can look at your back and say, got your back. <laughs> <laughs> this comedy goal, because the boys don't know this yet, but Ed is definitely gonna tell Liz all about their secret strip club plans. We expect to freaking animals. We're brothers. Yeah, man, we look out for each I other. I do not trust Ed. Ed is gonna tell. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that Kelly knew right away that Ed was gonna rat them out and he's not to be trusted. Out of everyone in this group, the only person that could go to a strip club and deserves to have ass thrown in his face is probably Kelly because he's been treated so terribly by Molly and he's a single man. I don't think the guys realize the consequences of them going to the strip club, but I'm not responsible for these grown men. They know how their wives are and that's on them. I'm good. What the hell? One drink, y'all. I'm a 10 drink bitch. Nah, you're prison dude's bitch now, Molly. Angela finally shows up at the pool party and the cast members decide to take shots. As they're sitting down, notice how Molly has Kalani sit in between her and Kelly, very on brand for her. Got you the water. Open, open, That's open. That's a shot? Right. Jesus Christ. That's two shots. <laughs> was that Oswello that said that? I think so. That's two shots. I think the shot was super effective against Oswello because he starts making sweet, sweet mouth love to this pineapple. So Kalani starts to noticing there's a disturbance in the forest and when she asks Oswello what he's doing, he does this. No, 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 he's blowing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. He's good, man. Oh that's funny because that's exactly what the 12 other women said as well. Anyways, Kalani says to the audience, I'll give it to you. You're pretty good with your mouth, bro. What a titty twister this is. That's how you know the relationship's over when she starts calling you butter, bro. Another inclination that we picked up on that this relationship is over is that Kalani invited her hall past Dallas to fly to Miami so that they can fuck. Aswello got that liquid courage and he got a flashback of the glory days when he used to dance for his woman at the airport so he proceeds to give her the strip tease of her life. Magic Mike, boom. <laughs> so Oswello takes off his second towel and he has a big surprise for his wife and the other cast members. It turns out that he's not wearing any swim trunks. Put your hand on his chest. <laughs> Molly is shook at staring at Oswello's package while Kelly moves seats. He can't believe that he just did that. Even though Oswello is the 90 day version of Encino Man, it's not every day that he shows his assholo to everybody. So just when you thought that the scene couldn't get any crazier, Oswello stands over the fire and does squats to establish his dominance. Kalani says to her husband, you have a nice ass, dude. And then Ed says, what just happened? Oswello's feeling real frisky right now. So he starts spitting at his wife. Is it beautiful? Yours is so beautiful. Kalani responds in an annoyed tone. I know you always tell me my butthole is so pretty. Let me know what y'all think in the comments about this, but for me, it's not what he said versus how he said it. Is it beautiful? Yours is so beautiful. Talking about her butthole. If he said something funny like, damn, baby, you're so sexy. Let me eat that butt. Then it would be different. You know what I mean? It's almost like how he presented it made it even more creepy. Conversation comes up about Molly and Kelly's relationship and Kelly once again doubles down on how he feels really disrespected and unloved by Molly. Molly, how are you guys doing? Great. Oh man. 
Why would you tell him that you don't love him? In exactly. As Molly was called out by the other cast members for treating Kelly like trash on this TV show, she went into a whole monologue about how she's a mother and a business owner. And hot diggity dog, we all know what kind of mother Molly is thanks to her daughter Olivia breaking her silence. And what you don't realize is I didn't pick to be on that TV show. Yeah, it might have been cool, but I was 12 years old when my mom did her first show, and I didn't have a choice. And actually, whenever she did 90 Day Fiance, I told her I didn't want to be a part of it because it's embarrassing, and she threatened me with a, a car and paying my bills and taking me to do the stuff that I like to do. She threatened me with that, and... Uh, that's why I, I, I wasn't going to speak on it, but I actually just got a call from my lawyer today. And uh, my mom is filing a restraining order on me. Not sure why, because I don't care to see her literally ever again, because she does me dirty like she does everyone else in her life. If you look at her Facebook page, you look at all the employees who work for her, they'll all tell you the same thing. They'll all tell you the same thing. And that's why people are like, oh, why did you, whatever. I was literally, I feel like sometimes my mom only had me so I could be her crutch. I, whenever her and her million boyfriends were breaking up and she had stuff going on at work, I was the person who she would come home and cry to. An eight-year-old should not have to hear about how your boyfriend cheated on you and you're crying so hard that you run off the road. Molly constantly put her own needs over her daughter's and for women like this, perhaps you shouldn't have children. You're looking for a man to come into your life, your chaotic life, and fix all of your problems instead of manning up or womaning up in this case and fixing your problems yourself. And you know what it all comes down to? Have your own shit in order before you enter a relationship. It's not that hard. Kelly calls Molly out in front of the whole group and she feels disrespected by that. So she walks away instead of being honest with him, which is to be expected because she's been lying this entire time. She got on Kelly a lot for walking away instead of staying in uncomfortable situations and working things out with her, but she's doing the same thing to him in the later episode. Unfortunately, Oswello and Kalani and a couple of the cast members are feeling tired because they were drinking, so they decide to call it a night. And when this happens, I'm really shocked by this because earlier Kelly said, Oswello, you're my bro. He brought him the robe. He's not really your bro because right now it's an uncomfortable situation with you and your woman, and Oswello's nowhere to be seen. But you know who did have your back and who actually pressed Molly? Ed. Which surprised me because that was supposed to be Kelly's arch nemesis. But in this episode, Ed has shown a lot of good character growth. There's a lot of things that I like that he did in this episode. One of which being pressing Molly. And he gave Kelly great advice, which was the relationship's over. You should move on. This woman disrespects you. He didn't say all that, but he told Kelly straight up that he should move on. Molly gets back from the restroom and is questioned by the cast members that stayed. However, before we get to that, let's see what Kelly says to the audience. I'm not begging. I'm not begging nobody to be with me. Okay, Kelly, I see you. I like that you recognize that you're better than this. However, you could do a better job of forming your arguments, especially in front of Molly. But I understand it's at the point that when he even sees this woman, he feels triggered because it's incredibly embarrassing to invest all this time and energy in someone that doesn't love you or respect you. So I get that aspect of it. I will say this for all the die wet socks. Let me know what you think about this in the comments, but we're attracted to women that are nurturing and there's nothing nurturing about Molly. So I struggle to wrap my brain around how Kelly even found himself in this situation. You want me to come relax with you, but what can you take off my plate to compensate for that? If it was such a big problem, for you that he's not financially contributing to your expenses, Molly, then you should have communicated that before he retired in Georgia. Did have an agreement before he moved? No, we know what the agreement was? That he sent me pictures of houses. He sent me pictures of this. He sent me pictures of that. We're not engaged. We don't live together. He's in a too expensive apartment. At the end of this conversation, Molly ratted on herself because we find out that Kelly was financially stable. He paid for his own apartment in Georgia. What Molly wanted was for him to put her on and help her pay her bills because she's not financially stable and that's the facts. Molly, good luck in the dating world because you have unrealistic expectations for any man you enter a relationship with. He's worked all his life. He and ain't worked all his goddamn life. He's 42 years old and... Now for Kelly, I will say you've been talking a lot about how the relationship is over and you're done and there's no rectifying it, but you're still on the show. 
walk away because if you take personal accountability, this is a woman you should have never entered a relationship with in the first place. If you got some spare change, please check out our merch. If you want some one-on-one -on -one time with me, please order a cameo. I'm the number one cameo creator in the entire world. I'm super thankful that y'all watch my content. Comment below, subscribe. Let's be fair, let's be fair. Follow me on Twitch and on Instagram right now.